help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. That are special to you, that you share with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and no one else. Like the Wahi. And they are righteous dreams. Righteous dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes when you're a I hear this because I'm a teacher as well. And these teenagers come to me every year. I have the same year nines. <laughs> I'm stuck with the year nines, guys, every year. It's that critical age. And it's like they never change, but I forget that they've moved on. So I get the same ones over and over again. Teenagers are the same. And one of the things they always tell me, I hear this a lot. Sir, I never used to see so many dreams. Now I see too many dreams. Some of them say I don't see anything. But a lot of them say I see the day of judgment. I see this and I see that. Subhanallah, it's as if when you hit puberty, the shaitan comes to want to destroy you know, your pathway, make you feel like something's wrong with you. Then Allah brings you dreams as well to help you be guided, a warning or a guide or something good to give you maybe a sign that you are going good. You, you remember those dreams? You've had those nice dreams? I haven't had some in, in, in a while. Maybe, maybe three days ago was a nice dream, but a long time before that. I just wish those dreams would come. They make you feel something special, don't they? Anyway, imagine you went to your dreams and went back to the Prophet wasallam, and you're looking for him. Where do you think you'll find him? Where you will find him? Where do you think? Where's the first place to look? Let's say you don't know how he looks like. You it looks like you don't know where it is you've never been to Mecca or Medina how do you know <laughs> but you went back 1400 years ago and the first thing you think about oh, Rasulullah where is he where do you go without asking anyone anyone want to guess the masjid no huh not the Kaaba no no hmm ah Hassan. well done with the poor people that's what the Sahabas used to say if we ever looked for Rasulullah outside of Salat time, because you know, a Muslim doesn't, have, doesn't stay in the, in the masjid all the time. That's not a productive Muslim to stay in the masjid all the time. Rasulullah if he had nothing else to do at home or his other duties, he was at the masjid. But you will find him with the poor people. And he used to say, I love the poor people the most. And the most people of Jannah are the people who used to be poor here. Something secret about them, Allahu A'lam. And not everybody can handle being poor. <laughs> Have you ever heard someone making that statement? Nobody, not many people can handle being wealthy. I said, not many people can handle being poor. Like you think you, you think you deserve to be poor? It's like that. Poverty now seems a, a blessing, but only for some people. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا Allah says, no one will receive it, Jannah, except those who are absolutely patient. وَمَا يُلَقَّاهَا إِلَّا ذُو حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Those who are endured with great fortune. When you... Rasulullah used to look for the poor people and used to be sitting, sitting amongst them. So let's look at the mentality today. If Allah loves you, He makes you rich with money. Here is the Prophet praising the poor people who are righteous, of course. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved people based on the blessings He gives them, then why? Rasulullah himself was not wealthy. He didn't even like it. The other way around as well. If Allah loves only the poor people of wealth, why would He give Dawood and Sulaiman and Yusuf السلام, among the greatest kingdom on earth? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love, uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved you only when you see someone healthy, then why did He make Prophet Ayyub alayhi salam? so sick for so many years even some people used to say look at this man Ayyub if he hadn't done something terribly wrong Allah would not put him through this hardship isn't that correct and people moved away from him they isolated him because they didn't want to get jinxed by him they thought he's a non-righteous man evil man we don't want to get this you know mirrored into our family some people live long Allah must love them. Some people live short. What have they done? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love for a person is a sign that you live long, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
would not allow Fir'aun to be in his kingdom and sit and live long. In fact, he preserved his body so that no one can ever forget him. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not like a person, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took someone's life early, which meant that he doesn't love him, he wouldn't take the Prophet sallallahu child, Al-Qasim and Ibrahim at the age of two years old. So my brothers and sisters, love of Allah is not based on the amount of blessings you have in this world or the lack of it. It has nothing to do with that. Have you ever heard of happiness and contentment? The difference between happiness and contentment is that happiness is temporary, contentment is forever. And contentment in Arabic is called qana'ah. Qana'ah. To be satisfied and content with whatever you have. It doesn't matter what state the Muslim is, the mu'min is, you have contentment. You don't forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are in prison, you look at it as a seclusion between you and Allah. If you are out in the open, you see that Allah has given you a duty you have to give, you have to do. If you have wealth, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you responsibility to use that wealth in some good way. If you don't have wealth, it means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing you with poverty. And you're going to learn from it for others. Because the biggest people who really are the most humble, you'll find the homeless people. You give them, they give. For some reason. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you children, it means He's testing you with your children somehow. Or He is honoring you with the children, but it's a responsibility. He gets you married, it's a responsibility. But comes all the blessings come with it. If He keeps you single, again, it's a responsibility. Whatever it may be. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you tests and responsibilities and with it, you will rise or fall. It's up to you. But here's the thing. Allah will not bear you more than what you can bear. لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah will not burden a soul with more than what they can bear. This is a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then how come some people say, I can't bear it anymore? Brothers and sisters, this is you making that decision. Wallahi, this is us making that decision. There are so many YouTube clips from non-Muslims who have learned from us, from the past, how to motivate people to move forward and not give up. But Allah sent the Messenger وسلم, to teach us that from the beginning. Yaqub السلام, said to his, his children, who tried to kill his own son Yusuf after many years, he said to them, لا من روح الله. Do not give up from the mercy of Allah. Don't despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ The only ones who give up on Allah's mercy are the disbelievers in Allah because they don't trust Allah's mercy. Those are the people who say, what have I ever done for God to do this to me? What have I ever done so God doesn't give me and gives the other person? These are people who deny Allah's favors and blessings. These are the ones who despair from His mercy because they don't have any trust in His mercy, subhanahu. And he said to his sons, don't. And look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them. Look what he gave Yusuf alayhi salam. And what Yusuf alayhi salam said in the end, after all the dungeon, all the prison, all the hardship, what did he say on his throne? Rabbi, my Lord, you are the one who gave me this kingdom. And you are the one who taught me the knowledge that I know. Oh Allah, I ask you only to make me die as a Muslim and make me join with the righteous. You know, al-hiqni in Arabic means someone's ahead of you and you're running up to them. You're chasing them. You're in the back row. Yusuf alayhi salam, the Prophet of Allah, says, Oh Allah, even in the back row, I'm happy with that. Let me follow the righteous. This is a form of humbleness. That if you think that you are such a righteous person and you boast about that, then these are the people who actually forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you think of yourself too good, you fail. And when you think of yourself too low, you'll never rise. But stay somewhere in the middle. My brothers and sisters in Islam, so what are the signs of Allah's love for you? And what are the signs in you that you love Him? The first is that you are a voluntary follower, meaning no one's forcing you. You are a voluntary follower of the message of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in the Quran, 
قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم الله says say if you love Allah then follow me follow Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and Allah will love you in return following the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم Allah loves you now following the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is how is it just in the in the white thawb in my beard in the miswak in the hat in that that I eat with my hands or I sleep on my right no ittiba' al-rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم is what he said in the following hadith you want to know after the worship we all know the worship and the sunan of worship he said atadruna man al-muslim he said to his companions do you know what a muslim is they said allah wa rasuluhu a'lam allah and his messenger know best he said al-muslim man salima lisanahu man salima an-nas min lisanihi wa yadihi a muslim is someone whom the people are safeguarded from his or her tongue and his hands then he said atadruna ma almu'min do you know what the mu'min is a bit higher than a muslim believer they said allah and his messenger know best he said almu'minu man aminahu an-nasu ala amwalihim wa anfusihim a mu'min is somebody whom people feel safe with their wealth and their honor and self with them they can trust them with their wealth and their honor you do business with them they're not going to cheat you they're not going to lie to you they're not going to deny you. themselves their family their children their bodies their honor you won't backbite them you won't gossip about them you won't tell about their secrets you won't harm them when you get angry you won't hit them you won't abuse them sometimes you look at people and you find them like that don't you you think subhanallah you know what i will never deal in business except with that person and sometimes people tell you if you ever want to deal in business with anyone go to that person you heard that that person and it's like people don't really know them but they hear all this good about them right and everybody starts to point to that person no my dear brothers and sisters if you are like that then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed your acceptance in earth he has made you a trustworthy person whom the angels love why because people can trust you with their bodies their honor and their wealth then he said wal mujahid and the one who does jihad الذي جاهد نفسه على طاع في طاعة الله he or she is the one who strives against themself in continuing to worship Allah and obey him as much as they can what muhajir and he who migrates really man hajara as-sayyi'a man hajara al-khataya wal ma'asi wal dhunub the one who truly migrates is the one who migrates from their sins and their mistakes meaning not all sins the major sins you have a bad habit of sin and finally you're able to migrate from it and never return to it as for minor sins my dear brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives them so long as you continue to do your acts of worship any tiny little good deed that you do without taking it for granted is a sadaqa even muad said ya rasul allah he said if i say la ilaha illa allah is that a good deed he said among the best deeds ya muad just say la ilaha illa allah it wipes away your little sins beloved brothers and sisters allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and when allah loves you there are some signs when he loves you you'll feel like pleasing him more you'll feel like reciting the quran praying salah praying tahajjud helping other do good deeds and you will hate doing bad deeds going to kufr going to all the sinful acts that you will start hating and all the good deeds you will love them and you will continuously try to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing all the righteous acts and when you follow rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when you love rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you and my dear brothers and sisters when allah loves you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls jibril and tells that he loves you and then jibril tells it to the angels 
that Allah loves so and so and then the angels spread it on the earth and the heavens and my dear brothers and sisters when Allah loves you people start loving you the angels love you so do the good deeds do the continuous good deeds which will bring you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuous recitation of the Quran continuous zikr remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continuous helping others looking after the poor people taking care of the you know this orphans and widows and any sort of good deed that comes into your mind and also praying tahajjud praying qiyamul layl fasting and giving charity giving charity in secret all these things will bring love of allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make things easy for you allah will open the doors for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make righteous people love you May Allah forgive our shortcomings. May Allah give us the understanding of this deen and may Allah grant us Jannah for those who are. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.